Hey everyone, welcome back to my series on Terraform Basics. In today's episode, we'll be diving into configuration blocks, an essential aspect of the HashiCorp configuration language, HCL, and a key component of any Terraform configuration. So let's jump right in. Before we talk about configuration blocks, let's add some context by taking a moment to understand the HashiCorp configuration language, or HCL. It's a user-friendly language that Terraform uses to define infrastructure configurations. HCL is designed to be both human-readable and machine-friendly, making it easier for teams to collaborate on infrastructure as code. HCL is not only used by Terraform, it's also used by Vault, Packer, and other products in the HashiCorp portfolio. By understanding the fundamentals of HCL, you're not just increasing your knowledge of Terraform, you're also gaining fluency in a language that is used across multiple products. Fortunately, HCL is easy to grasp by its very nature. Now let's explore the basic syntax of a configuration block, and we'll start by looking at both the general syntax and an example that would create an Azure virtual network. In HCL, any configuration block starts with a keyword to define what type of block is being created. For instance, in our example, we use the keyword resource to signify that this is a configuration block that defines a resource in Terraform. Other examples of keywords are provider, variable, and output. Each keyword is used to define a specific type of configuration block. After the keyword, a configuration block may have one or more labels. The number of labels and their contents will be determined by the block type, which is why we need to have a keyword first. Going back to our resource example, the resource block requires two labels. The first label is the resource type, as defined by the provider being used. The naming convention for resource types starts with a provider name, followed by an underscore and the type of resource being managed. In our example, the first label will be Azure RM to indicate that we're using the Azure RM provider, followed by an underscore and the resource type, which in this case is virtual underscore network. The convention is to use underscores to separate words in the resource type. The second label for the resource keyword is the name of the block, which is used for reference elsewhere in the configuration. In our example, we've named the block web underscore app to indicate the purpose behind the resource. The best practice for naming is to use underscores in the same way we did for the resource type, and you should use a name that is descriptive of the resource being defined, not simply referencing the type of resource, like my underscore vnet. Don't do that. When you need to reference the resource elsewhere in your configuration, it will be a combination of the resource type dot the name label. As I mentioned, other block types have different label requirements and some, like the local block, don't require any labels at all. After the keyword and the labels, we use curly braces to define the beginning of the internal block. This is where we define the attributes and values for the block. Within the configuration block, we have the attributes and assigned values required to configure the block. The supported attributes will vary depending on the type of block being defined. An attribute is composed of a string defining the attribute's name, followed by an equal sign, and then an expression for the attribute value. The expression will resolve to any data type supported by HCL including strings, numbers, lists, maps, and more. The expression can also be a reference to another block or an attribute of that block within the configuration. For our example, the first attribute is the name of the virtual network, simply called name. Based on the documentation for the Azure RM virtual network resource, we know that the name attribute is required and it takes a string as a value. Our value is being set to the string expression web-app. Some attributes will be required while others will be optional. Optional attributes may have a default value if no value is provided or will simply be omitted from the properties sent to the provider. Check the documentation for a given block type to determine which approach is used. 
Another required attribute for the virtual network is the resource group. Here, we could have an expression referencing another resource in our configuration, the Azure RM resource group, with the name label web underscore app and the attribute name of that resource. An optional attribute is the tags attribute, which takes a map data type with key value pairs for each tag name and assigned value. Now, don't worry too much about the actual data structure right now. I just wanted to show an alternative to the string and reference expressions we've already seen. If you don't set the tags attribute, then the virtual network will be created without any tags. Aside from attributes, the other thing you'll see in a configuration block is a nested block. A nested block is simply a configuration block that exists inside of another block. It follows the same syntax as any other configuration block, meaning it starts with a keyword that defines what the block type is, followed by any labels required for the block, and then the curly braces to determine the internal portion of the block. In our example, the Azure RM Virtual Network resource supports a nested block for defining one or more subnets. The keyword in this case is subnet and no labels. Then we have the curly braces and inside we define the attributes and values for the subnet block. You can repeat the same block multiple times as we've done here with the subnet block. This allows you to create multiple subnets for the virtual network. It's also possible to have a nested block inside a nested block, although you won't encounter it too often. To summarize, Configuration blocks are a fundamental part of the HashiCorp configuration language, and they are used extensively in Terraform, Vault, and other HashiCorp products. HCL is designed to be relatively simple, opinionated, and easy to read. Once you get the fundamentals of configuration blocks down, you'll be able to read and write HCL with ease. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. If you're looking for something to watch next, check out the next video in the Terraform Basics series that should appear somewhere around here. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now.